George and Georgetta McDonald first went to live among the Dottawi people in Papua New Guinea in 1962. They found that tribal fighting and cannibalism had ceased just two years before that. The Australian administration had come to the area and had set up a government station. They built an airstrip and imposed law and order. Two denominational missions were just starting their work. They brought men from other parts of the country to serve as pastors and village evangelists. These men, of course, did not speak the local unwritten Dadabi language. And the Dadabis did not speak any outside language. The need of the gospel was obvious. Both missions supported the idea of Bible translations as a key means of meeting that need. It was an opportune time to begin the long process that would bring the Bible to the Dadabi people in their own language. This was a time before computers, and since the area was also very primitive, just living there among the people was time-consuming in itself. Even so, in the next 20 years, several New Testament books and a number of literacy books were produced for the people. In 1981, Clyde and Lois Whitby joined the work as a literacy team. It was their goal to make sure that there were readers for the New Testament. It was destined to be finished by 1987. I remember on a survey to the remote western village of Nordu, as we sat around the fire in the evening, an old man said to me, we are like the last banana in the bunch. Everyone else has received the word of God, but now only you are coming to us. I left that village more than ever convinced that we needed to bring God's word to them. Soon after that, we built a house in those backwoods. The whole Bible was finished and dedicated on September 21, 2001. It was a momentous occasion, the first whole Bible by an SIL team in Papua New Guinea, but more significantly, a whole Bible for the Dadaabi people. We're within one mile of Nagabo. We still can't quite see it because of the cloud, but we got very, very close. It's obviously beginning to break and lift up, but if it's not uh, visible, within about another five, ten minutes, we'll go over to Karamui. MAF helped us by flying a twin otter twice that morning to the village. The terrain is rugged and mountainous, and the clouds that morning were right down to the ground. He had landed and was ready to go back for a second load. Even then, he disappeared into the low clouds very rapidly. That's the village of Nagabo and our airstrip down there. Our house, a church, a literacy house, and about 600 people in bush houses scattered about. It's customary to open or cut a bush barrier to allow the people to come to the dedication area. Here they are praying prior to the cutting. The barrier is cut and hundreds of people come from all over the language group. The Dadabi number more than 10,000 now and about 2,000 came to the dedication. Even from the remotest villages the people came. Dancers and warriors in native costume, along with singing groups, were leading the people to the dedication. The outsiders were greeted at the dedication with an English version of a welcome song. Most of the ceremony was in the local language, some in the trade language of Tokpisin. Some of us, including George, Georgetta, and Lois, 
got chairs out of our house and from the church. Most people either stood or sat on the ground. Pastors from seven denominations took part in the ceremonies. Our local village pastor, Dua, spoke on Isaiah 55, 10, and 11, in which God compares the word of God to the rain and snow that comes down from heaven and waters the earth to make it grow and to provide seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God says, So shall my word be, it shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish that which I please. This local singing group wrote a song about the McDonald's coming in 1962 and about we coming and the two teams bringing the word of God to them. There were four or five singing groups. Some of them did very nicely at harmonizing. In the middle of the ceremony, we could see the clouds forming and rain beginning to come off the mountain. It was just before George was about to speak. He had planned to read a letter from one of his sons, who had grown up among the people. It was an appropriate time because the people from the village had come to the ceremony, but George didn't get a chance to do it until later in a church service. George's co-translators were the first to get their Bibles. There were four co-translators present, plus many others who had helped in the checking process. Letter of praise to God for the blessed event of dedication of God's Word, the Bible, in the Darby language. Darby Pode. E posite gorigo nogi ukubasabu pasidao. I presented a letter from partners who had helped to fund the Bible printing. Brian Hodgkin from SIL, the Associate Director of Language Affairs, spoke and gave out certificates. Various gifts were given to the McDonald's and to the Whitby's. The first co-translator, Masada, gave George an unusual gift, a very special hat. Bible distribution began in spite of the rain. Some had pre-purchased and those were distributed first. <laughs> the rain dampened the distribution at the ceremony, but later many Bibles were bought. <laughs> 
Gaza, Kobazi, no body, what you are. Tamati Arima, the Gorigo, the Dwaibi, Hainu, the We have probably three to four thousand readers these days. Some read well, and others are just beginning. The presence of the Bible actually encourages reading in a society where there's very little reading. We had invited a Youth with a Mission group of young people to come to our village and run a three-week Bible leadership training course. In the course, there were nearly 40 young men and women leaders studying the Bible. On one of the last weekends in the course, they took God's Word out to other villages. The course attendees reached a couple of thousand more people during that event. Jacob, a fine Christian, a teacher in the elementary schools, studies and is explaining things to others in the group. These young Dadabis witness the dedication of the whole Bible in their language. Their generation is the first in Dadabi history that can grow into adulthood with the Bible as a light on their pathway. We invite you to pray with us that as they read God's book, they will come to understand how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ who loved them and gave himself for them.